أعوذ بالله من الشيطان اللعين الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى أحل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين اما بعد بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي امنا بالله وصدق الله العلي العظيم my dear brothers and sisters salam alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh i wish you all glad tidings today as we gather to celebrate the wilada of Sayyida Zainab alayha salam. It is important in our madhab, the madhab of Shia, to honor some of the women who have contributed to the message of Ahlul Bayt alayhim salam. And the women that we honor in the madhab of Ahlul Bayt are very, very special women. And honoring them reminds us also of the ability and necessity of, we, of female role models within society and also within our madhab. Sayyidah Zainab, as you know, is the daughter of Imam Ali, the sister of Imam Hassan and Hussein alayhi salam. She was born during the lifetime of Rasulullah in the fifth year after Hijrah, and she died in 62 AH, after the tragedy of Karbala, not very long after the tragedy of Karbala. She lived for 57 years, as we heard, and in those 57 years, she left for us so many messages, so many inspirations, so many examples, that we have very few female role models, not only in our madhab, not only in Islam, but globally and nationally that even come close to holding the status of Sayyida Zainab. And what can I tell you about Sayyida Zainab? You know, when they wrote her biography, they entitled the book, Victory of Truth, because Sayyida Zainab took the message and the truth of Karbala to the next level. When we go to visit Sayyida Zainab and Sayyida Ruqayya in Sham, you all know how that place feels. You know, why do we go to Sham? Why do we take so much trouble to go there? You know, we could go to Karbala where it's safe, yet people choose to go to Sham. Even when ISIS were there, people were going to Sham, right? Even still, it's dangerous people go to Sham. Why? You could easily go to Medina, and do the ziyarah there, or you can go to Karbala where it is safe. But we go to Sham because of Sayyida Zainab and Sayyida Ruqayya. These are women, these are female role models. Our madhab has given them that lofty status that even when it is difficult and dangerous to visit them, we still go, why? Because no matter what's going on in your life, no matter what difficulties you're experiencing, no matter what tragedies are befalling you, the moment you enter the sanctity of Zainab and the moment you enter the mausoleum of Ruqayya, everything goes away and you feel in your heart the sukoon and the peace that you've never felt. And this is what you go there for. And this is what the status of women is in our madhab, that even though there are women and even though they may not have the status of males in the eyes of some. For us Shia, they hold the same lofty status as Sayyidu Fatima to Zahra alayha salam. And they bring to us that inspiration of our madhab and that message of truth. One of the things that you find with Sayyida Zainab is the message of patience. Because if you look at Sayyida Zainab alayha salam, there are so many messages that she would give us. And you look at the other madhab, and they have female role models as well. They have female role models as well, but what did they do? They came out in camels to cause wars, right? 
But you look at our madhab and the role models that we have. Look at the role model of Sayyida Zainab and look at her character. Look at her strength. Look at her resiliency. Look at her truth. Look at her knowledge. Look at her love of peace. And then finally, we come to patience. And I want to spend a few minutes talking about sabr, talking about patience. Because when it comes to sabr, there is no other role model in the world, in history, in any history, forget our history, in any history, there is no role model who can teach you about patience as much as Sayyidah Zainab. What is patience? We all know about patience. Patience, by definition, if you look in the dictionary, the definition of patience is, to be, is the ability, the ability to be calm and cool and silent in three situations, three situations. The first situation is when something is not coming to you. You are waiting for something and it's not coming. Whether it is money, whether it's something, say a medical appointment, you're waiting for surgery, you are waiting for a doctor to fix your leg, you're waiting for money to come to you so you can buy a bigger house, or you're waiting for some family member to visit and they're not getting a visa. That's the first situation where you would be calm and you would be cool and you would not get angry and you would not do anything harmful to yourself or others. And you would simply say, I leave my fate to Allah. Whatever will happen, will happen. So that's the first situation. The second situation in which patience would apply is to be calm and cool and collected in the situation of a calamity, in the situation of a bala. You might talk about a war. You might talk, talk about pandemic. We have just come out of pandemic. And during pandemic, we were expected to be quiet and calm and trust the authorities. First there was one lockdown, then there was another lockdown, and then there was another lockdown, and everybody asked, when do I get my hair cut? And they say, do sabr, be patient. When can I get my car fixed? When can I buy a new coat? When can I go to the shop? And they said, be patient. Trust the authorities. We will tell you when it is safe, when people are vaccinated, when it is safe, when there is herd immunity, we will tell you. But be patient, the time will come. So the second situation where patience is required is the situation of when there is a calamity. The third situation, when you would be expected to be showing patience and sabr, is when, for example, the whole world turns against you. You might be in a situation where you're accused of a crime, or you're accused of doing something and nobody believes that you are on the truth, the whole world turns against you. You know that you did not do that. Maybe you were in the wrong place at the wrong time and the police took you away. And now even your family says, why did you do this? And you say, I didn't do anything. I was just in the wrong place. The police took me. The whole world might turn against you. And that is when you turn to Allah and say, I will be patient. So these are three situations where we would think that patience would apply. Now, if you think about these three situations, number one, when something is not coming to you. Number two, when there is a calamity. Number three, when the world turns against you. When you think about these three situations, in the context of the life of Sayyida Zainab alayha salam, you find that all three situations apply to her. You talk about the first situation where something isn't coming to you. Remember Zainab in Karbala, when she was relying on Abbas to help, when she was relying on her husband to come and help, when she was relying on the people of Kufa to come and help. Did that help come? No, it didn't come. And we saw what happened. The second situation was what? Is when there is a calamity. What bigger calamity has there been in the world other than the calamity that befell Zainab in Karbala. And number three, when the whole world turns against you, remember how the world turned against Zainab alayhi salam. Both in Kufa and Sham, where people knew Sayyida Zainab as the princess of Imam Ali alayhi salam, 
the same people when she came paraded with the army of Yazid were throwing things at Zainab. And what did Zainab say? We heard from Sheikh. Ma ra'aytuhu illa jamila. I saw nothing but beauty. In all these situations, she saw nothing but beauty. So we find that by definition, patience applies to Sayyidah Zainab at all three levels. At the highest level even, when the world turned against her, she saw nothing but beauty and she exercised the highest degree of patience. When we face such circumstances, are we displaying patience at all? Maybe we'll be patient for five minutes, 10 minutes. Remember the lockdowns? We were patient for the first lockdown when the second one came, halas. No, I'm gonna go and get my hair cut. I can't do so much sabr. And those who were doing sabr, were we doing sabr with, with sukoon? Were we doing sabr with calmness? No, we were getting angry. We were getting annoyed. Think about when you're stuck in traffic or think about when you've, when you've ordered something on Amazon and it's not coming and said, well, I paid for Prime, it should be here tomorrow. This is what society has done to us. It's made us so impatient. So impatient that when we enter the online order, we expect it to be here yesterday, right? This is how society is today. We're a society of instant gratification. Or think about yourself in traffic. You're going to work in traffic and you expect if you leave home in 20 minutes you should be at work. Society doesn't work that way. There could be a car accident somewhere. There could be a delay somewhere. Think about us when we miss a flight. You're at Pearson Airport, you're going back home to India, Pakistan, wherever, and your flight is canceled. Halas, it's the end of the world. If I'm that airline agent that day, I'm going to run away from some of our brothers because they get so angry. But my brothers and sisters, think about the patience of Sayyidah Zainab. And yes, we have people within us who have exercised that patience. Think about the people of Iraq, war after war after war, right? And they learn from our tradition from Sayyidah Zainab to exercise that patience. So look at the patience of Sayyidah Zainab. What can you see in the patience of Sayyidah Zainab, in the sabr of Sayyidah Zainab, that is different from the sabr that we might be exercising? So the first thing we already talked about. The patience, the sabr of Sayyidah Zainab was graceful. She was not angry. She was not agitated. She was not irritated. She exercised patience with gracefulness. And she says that she saw nothing but beauty. Despite everything that happened, she saw nothing but beauty. The second thing with the patience of Sayyidah Zainab, which is an important thing when we talk about sabr, when we talk about patience, the other important thing that you find is that Sayyidah Zainab was still assertive about the rights of Ahlul Bayt. So patience doesn't mean that you sit quietly, that you don't speak out, you know, you don't ask questions. If there is a calamity, if there is a war, sure, we will do sabr, but it doesn't mean that we cannot ask questions. And the best example for that is the speech that she gives in the court of Yazid, where Sayyidah Zainab still says what she has to say and still points out the faults of Yazid. The third thing that you find is that the patience of Sayyidah Zainab is in keeping with what the Quran teaches about patience. And this is an important point because when we come to the Quran, we forget that one of the biggest messages of the Quran is sabr, is patience. Inna Allah sabirin, right? We hear that in the Quran. Allah is with those who are patient. And we find story after story after story in the Quran talking about patience. Be patient. The will of Allah will come. The help of Allah will come. Allah will defeat those who have hurt you. How many times have we heard these verses? We heard this, for example, with Musa and Fir'aun, right? Or we hear this 
in the story which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls Ahsanul Qasas. Which story is that? Anyone know? Which story does it start with the, with the description of, of the story in the beginning? Allah says the most beautiful of stories I'm about to tell you. The story of Yusuf. If you read Surah Yusuf, it starts with Ahsanul Qasas. This is the best of stories. But look at the patience that Yusuf has. But then look at the patience of Yaqub. When Yusuf is taken away from Yaqub, Prophet Yaqub in Surah to Yusuf talks about his patience. That is the type of patience that you see in Sayyidah Zainab as well. You see the patience of Maryam. You see the patience of Ibrahim with Namrud. All these stories in the Quran tell you time and time again that wait for the help of Allah. The help of Allah will come. Allah will save you from evil. The patience of Zainab is very much in keeping with the message of the Quran. And it's important that we study Quran with that lens, with the lens of akhlaqi messages, with the lens of what exactly is the message behind this verse of the Holy Quran. The fourth thing that you have to remember is that the patience of Zainab is an infinite patience, right? You have finite patience and infinite patience. Infinite patience means that she has to remain patient till the end of time. Because Abbas is not going to save her. Hussein is not going to save her. What happens to Ruqayya in Sham, that's not going to be unchanged. History will always remember that when Ruqayya was with Sayyidah Zainab in the dungeons of Sham, that Ruqayya passes away in the arms of Zainab. History will always remember that. The suffering of Zainab is not going to end no matter what. Whereas the patience we have is finite, right? We are waiting for something, it will come. Maybe we have to wait for five years. For lockdown, we had to wait for two years. But eventually, alhamdulillah, things opened up. So the patience that we have is a finite patience. The patience of Sayyid Zainab is an infinite patience at so many levels. And so if we are in a situation where we are faced with the patience that might be infinite, maybe you've lost somebody, maybe your son dies at a young age, or you have a family member that you lose at a young age, that Suffering for you is going to be infinite. At that time, you remember, the patience of Sayyidah Zainab was also infinite. And finally, Zainab's patience comes with a sacrifice. A sacrifice of Ruqayya, a sacrifice of Hussein, a sacrifice of Abbas and Ali Akbar, and her own two children, Aun and Muhammad as well. Our patience usually does not require a sacrifice at the end. We exercise patience, we exercise sabr, but it does not usually involve sacrificing our family in the process. Maybe sometimes that, that might happen, but very rarely are we expected to have that level of patience where we have to make a sacrifice. And so this is how the patience of Sayyidah Zainab differs num from ours. Number one, she had a graceful patience, Number two, while being graceful, she was still assertive. We have to learn from that. Number three, her sabr, her patience, was in line with the message of the Quran. Number four, she had an infinite patience. And number five, her patience came with a sacrifice. Most of the time, when we have to exercise patience in our lives, we forget the messages of Ahlul Bayt. And we forget these kinds of stories about the personalities that we consider important and we consider as role models. I end with a simple dua that we are able to learn from our personalities, from the women personalities specifically like Sayyidah Zainab, Sayyidah Ruqayya and Bibi Fatima to Zahra alayha salam, that we are able to inculcate their messages, their themes into our lives and specifically from Sayyidah Zainab, whose bilada we are here to commemorate, that we can learn the message of sabr, that we can learn the message of patience and implement it in our own lives. We send our salam today to Sayyidah Zainab in Sham as well as Sayyidah Ruqayya, 
and to all the martyrs of Karbala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.